What's up, y'all? Welcome to Union Minded. I'm your host, Eric, and today we're going to continue our discussion on the LMRDA, Labor Management Reporting and Disclosure Act, 1959. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Section 3 or Title 3. Uh, it's all about trusteeships and the reports that are required by such trusteeships. So in Section 301A, we start out right off the rip. Every labor organization which has or assumes trusteeship over any subordinate labor organization shall file with the secretary within 30 days after the date of en enactment of this act and semi-annually thereafter a report signed by its president and treasurer or corresponding principal officers as well as the trustees of such subordinate labor organization containing the following information. Number one, the name and the address of the subordinate organization. Number two, the date of establishing the trusteeship. Number three, a detailed statement of the reason or reasons for establishing or continuing the trusteeship. And number four, the nature and extent of participation by the membership of the subordinate organization in the selection of delegates to represent such organization in regular or special conventions or other policy determining bodies and in the election of officers of the labor organization which has assumed trusteeship over such subordinate organization. Now that's a long sentence to say that in that report there has to be a description of just how uh, how much participation the membership has and what that participation is in selecting delegates or other type of um, representatives um, or, po or determining policy of such trusteeship. Uh, the initial report shall also include a full and complete account of the financial condition of such subordinate organizations uh, as of the time trusteeship was assumed over it. During the continuance of a trusteeship, the labor organization which has assumed trusteeship over the subordinate labor organization shall file on behalf of the subordinate labor organization the annual financial report required by Section 201B signed by the president and the treasurer or corresponding principal officers of the labor organization which has assumed such trusteeship and the trustees of the subordinate labor organization. In Section B, it says that the provisions of Sections 201, 205, 206, 208, and 210 shall all be applicable to reports filed under this title. Uh, Part C then goes ahead and lets you know that any person who willfully violates this section shall be fined uh, not more than 10 grand or put in uh, behind bars uh, for one year. Not more than one year, or both. If you make a false statement, you face the same type of consequences, a $10,000 fine and up to a year in jail. And each individual that's required to sign a report under this section shall be personal, personally responsible for the filing of such report and for any statement contained therein which he knows to be false. So once your name's on that document, you got to be sure that everything, all, you know, all your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed. Uh, purposes for which a trusteeship may be established, you will find in section 302. It says trusteeships shall be established and administered by a labor organization over a subordinate body only in accordance with the constitution and bylaws of the organization which has assumed trusteeship over the subordinate body and for the purpose of correcting corruption or financial malpractice, assuring the performance of collective bargaining agreements or other duties of a bargaining representative, restoring democratic procedures or otherwise carrying out the legitimate objects of such labor organization. Um, there's also a section that has unlawful acts that are relating to labor organization under trusteeship. That's going to be in section 303. In part A it says during any period when a subordinate body of a labor organization is in trusteeship it shall be unlawful to count the vote of delegates from such body in any convention or election of officers of the labor organization unless the delegates have been chosen by secret ballot in an election in which all the members in good standing of such subordinate body were eligible to participate or uh, to, to transfer to such organization any current receipts or other funds of the subordinate body except the normal per capita tax and assessments payable by subordinate bodies not in trusteeship provided that nothing herein contained shall prevent the distribution of the assets of a labor organization in accordance 
with its constitution and bylaws upon the bona fide dissolution thereof. And then it says again, any person who violates this section shall be fined up to 10,000 or, or jailed up to a year or both. When it comes to enforcement, section 304 tells us that upon and upon the written complaint of any member or subordinate body of a labor organization alleging that such organization has violated the provisions of this title, except for Section 301, the Secretary shall investigate the complaint, and if the Secretary finds probable cause to believe that such violation has occurred and has not been remedied, he shall, without disclosing the identity of the complainant, so if you're going to complain, the Secretary, when he goes to, uh, uh, pers uh, to, to prosecute the complaint, He's going to keep the complainant anonymous and they can bring a civil action in any district court of the United States having jurisdiction of the labor organization for such relief including injunctions as may be appropriate. Any member or subordinate body of a labor organization affected by any violation of this title may bring a civil action in any district court of the United States having jurisdiction of the labor organization for such relief including injunctions as may be appropriate. And it says uh, in section B of uh, in section B of 304 it says for the purpose of actions under this section district courts of the United States shall be deemed to have jurisdiction of a, of a labor organization one is going to be in the district in which the principal office of such labor organization is located or number two is in any district in which its duly authorized officers or agents are engaged in conducting the affairs of the trusteeship uh, in Part C, it says, in any proceeding pursuant to this section, a trusteeship established by a labor organization in conformity with its procedural requirements of its constitution and bylaws and authorized or ratified after a fair hearing either before the executive board or before such other body as may be provided in accordance with its constitution or by bylaws shall be presumed valid for a period of 18 months from the date of its establishment and shall not be subject to attack during such period, except upon clear and convincing proof that the trusteeship was not established or maintained in good faith for a purpose allowable under Section 302. After the expiration of 18 months, the trusteeship shall be presumed invalid in any such proceeding, and its discontinuance shall be decreed, unless the labor organization shall show by clear and convincing proof that the continuation of the trusteeship is necessary for a purpose allowable under section 302. In the latter event, the court may dismiss the complaint or retain jurisdiction of the cause on such conditions and for such period as it deems appropriate. Then uh, in section 305, it says that um, the secretary shall submit to the Congress at the expiration of three years from the date of enactment of this act, a report upon the operation of this title. So three years after this act went into effect, they had to issue a report to Congress and let them know how it was going. Um, there's a section 306 says complaint by the secretary. And, uh, the rights and the remedies provided by this title shall be in addition to any and all other rights and remedies at law or in equity provided that upon the filing of a complaint by the secretary, the jurisdiction of the district court over such trusteeship shall be exclusive and the final judgment shall be res judicata that's some latin for you um so that section title three is all about basically your international uh labor union and your local unions underneath the international union uh that's what it's talking about when it's talking about trusteeships and then over subordinate labor organizations that would be like your local unions under the ibw um or you know other local other uh trades that have national um bodies and then local uh, organizations underneath those but anyway that's uh, title three um, again look it up and read up on the LMRDA it's an important law that you should be familiar with and on the next video we'll look over title four which is elections terms of office and election procedures that are required by federal law um, once again my name is Eric thanks for stopping by We're watching Union Minded and keep in mind that the fight is not left and right, never has been, never, never will be. The fight is up and down. And it'll take solidarity to win always. All right? And also, each one teach one. So get out and reach one. All right? Peace.